The next thing that I no longer do is read romance novels. <laughs> I no longer read romance novels. And this is the every single podcast dig at Dave. And I got to say, like, I'm no Dave fan, obviously, but I sort of feel for him that she throws Dave under the bus and their entire relationship, who again is like the father of her children and a co-parent for her kids for life. She is going to make it seem like he's the biggest asshole that's ever walked the earth. And I just don't find it to be true. Being a dick. You know, I'm sure he is, but I don't know. She makes it seem worse, I think, than it ever was because she really said she had an exceptional marriage with this man and now all of a sudden everything that went wrong is his fault. It's like very convenient. This maybe doesn't track with you at all if you're new to my community, but for years and years and years, I loved a romance novel. I talked about it all the time. I read in every genre. Was it historical? Yes. Was it sci-fi? Sure. Was it a current day? working woman meets a grouchy billionaire See, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm here for that. I have read all of them. Is there a vampire and a witch involved? Let's go. Uh, is it a teenage love story? Perhaps. Are we in the hunger games and like we're fighting for our lives, but also in a love triangle? Like if there was a love story in a book, sign me up. I am here. Old, new, doesn't matter. I want every part of it. And I read thousands. I'm not exaggerating that number. It was my preferred form of entertainment. Some people watch the Kardashians. I read historical romance novels, have spoken about it very publicly. I've written three novels that had love stories, very big part of my life for about a decade. And when I got divorced, I stopped reading them. And, so, and for obvious reasons, like I was going through this horrible breakup and I couldn't even fathom the idea of romance, let alone reading about someone else's love story. What's that song? Like, Love Stinks? Like, that was me. Remember in The Wedding Singer, <laughs> everyone at table eight? That was me. I was just like, love stinks. I don't want any part of this. So I wouldn't read any. And then over time, even like as that pain and that process dissipated, I didn't have a desire to read them anymore. And I started to wonder about that in the last six months because I thought, this is crazy. Like, this was such a massive part of my life. If I was by a pool on vacation or if it was my holiday break and the kids were in bed, I'd, like, pick up a novel and I don't do that. We get it. We get it. Get to the fucking point. <laughs> it all anymore. And I started trying to unpack and figure it out. I was in Brooklyn. I was having drinks with one of my friends. And she had just gone through a breakup. And she was saying how she was in her relationship. She had a long-term relationship. And when she was inside of it, she inside had it. written out the idea. She's a writer. So she had written out the idea for this like character based on her life, but not her life because the person was single and they were like, here's how they were looking for love. And it was interesting, whatever. And she's like, should have realized that was a red flag. And I was like, exactly. In retrospect, I read romance novels nonstop because I did not have romance in my life. I liked reading about me. She's such a bitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to say it. She's such a bitch. That's so mean. It's so mean. I, you know, think what you want. Like I'm going to pretend David, Dave doesn't exist. You were with this guy for 20 years. You had no romance at all. Isn't that something, again, like a little bit of your responsibility? Like you adopted a child with this man. You had three other children with this man. He's that bad. And you had a, you had a marriage conference propping your relationship up with this man. He was the CEO of your company. This awareness came so late and magic and people who were like intentional and this swoony love story because I didn't have that. I had a partnership. I had a co-parent. I had a very dear friend. I had a sex life. I had all of these things, but I did not have romance. In the, in the books, in the fantasy, I guess, the woman is pursued. She's pursued by someone. And 
and maybe she pursues them back, but kind of the crux of this idea is that they're falling in love and they're interested in each other and they do things. And I think this happens a lot in, in long-term relationships where the pursuit stops. And I really think that I retreated into reading about what I did not have. And I would try and sort of recreate these moments or like find these moments or let's have date night or whatever. But it's not the same when you're like figuring it out and setting it up and inviting the person and doing the, like, if you're solo in that effort, it doesn't feel the same as it does in a book, obviously. And it's super easy to hear this and be like, well, life isn't a book. You're right, but life can be magical. And I know what it's like to be in a relationship now with someone that romance is a priority. That's the thing, like everybody- Rachel, it wasn't about Dave. It was be probably more likely that you got married to him at 21 years old. The first guy you ever had been with, you decided this is the one and I'm gonna make it work no matter what. And this is the second guy you're with and you've only been with him a year and a half. Yeah, it's a lot easier a year and a half in than it is 13 years in with four children. Like that is just the truth of the matter, whether it's Dave or some other guy, I don't think it's as much as like a personal attack on her as she thinks it is. I think it's her life circumstances that she chose that are affecting that. Yes, of course, in the beginning of any new relationship, there's more romance, period. Most of the time, I would say, I would imagine that's the case for a lot of people. Not in every case, but she said she had like gotten past that by going on these Thursday night date nights and like in every book she's ever written like she she writes about Dave in the sense of like oh he was a jerk when we first met but he is like the most loving kind man ever now because I you know we've worked on it so much again a misrepresentation I believe it's to be who they are and romance is a lower priority for some people than others it doesn't make their choices wrong but it does mean if you have one partner who's reading nonstop about what it would be like to be in a relationship where romance is in the air and we're having adventures and we're doing these things and the other person's like, I'm fine with how it is, there's going to be a misalignment there. And there are... Dave also took her, and I'm assuming, I'm saying he took her because he was working and she was starting her business or she was staying at home at that time, to Argentina. They went to Europe when they were fairly young. So it's like... There was adventure, so it sounds like, at least when she would talk about and post about these things, that he was traveling all the time and he would take her a lot of times on these like work trips and she got to go and whatever. They went to Hawaii. Like none of that is romantic. None, none of it, none at all. Okay, just checking. Okay. Sorts of misalignments that lead to a breakup, but it never occurred to me that I was looking for something that I didn't have, that I was looking for something in the pages of those books that I didn't have. And I share that one because I'm going to bet that there are those of you who are pursuing and looking for things out in the world. You're like trying to do things externally that you're not getting inside the actual relationship that you're inside of. Inside this of. can lead to really dangerous things too, right? This can lead to really hurting someone that you're with because maybe you seek a level of intimacy with someone that is not your partner and that can be deeply hurtful or maybe this is what leads to affairs or maybe this is what leads to fantasy or sort of a disconnection from who you're with. But I do think that having those books, I didn't understand it at the time, but it was a crutch. It was like sort of a numbing mechanism. Like I could go to this place and read these other people's stories and have something fulfilled in me that I, I didn't have in my own relationship, but I, because I always had a book to go back to, I wasn't conscious of why I kept going back to the book. So it's kind of a weird one. And I don't, maybe you just liked it at that time and now you don't like it. Like also it could just also not be that deep. What that might be in your life. But for me, my girl said, when we were having drinks, like, she's like, that should have been a red flag. Like how excited I was about this story about this woman who was a, with a completely different kind of man than my partner should have been a signal to me that there was something that wasn't right. 
the fourth I, I thing, don't agree with that. I think people have fantasies about things all the time. And as long as you're not, you know, disrespecting your partner to act on it or take it to a place that's disrespectful to your partner, I think they're totally fine personally. I know she's got a problem with like porn and stuff, but I don't. So I think that's a natural thing that when you repress things like that, that's when I think you run into trouble personally. This is Rachel. This situation is a red flag. This situation is a red flag. This whole podcast is a red flag. And also, this person is not okay. This person, aka Rachel Hawes, is not okay. <laughs>